In a patriarchal community where land is a key source of production, Colina Kulu is landless. She does not even have a small garden in which to grow vegetables, making her an outcast among her neighbors. The hut she lives in was donated by a well-wisher, Geoffrey Ocheng, in 2014, when she was chased off her land by her uncle. Akulu is a veterinary doctor of sorts in Ajiagud A village, a Rotomito parish in Aromo sub-county, Lira district. To supplement the income she makes from treating animals, she makes cassava bread, which she vends in the trading center. Both incomes pay for the education of her 20-year-old son. Many years ago, when Akulu's mother developed misunderstandings with her husband, she returned to her father's home with her children. Akulu's grandfather gave his daughter a piece of land on which she built a house and planted a garden. By 2000, Akulu's grandfather, her mother and siblings were all dead and she was living with her grandmother. On August 28, 2000, when she was in Senior 5, she was abducted by a group of Lord's Resistance Army rebels who she says were led by Dominique Ongwen. I managed to come back home in 2002. I took four days to, re to be able to return back home. I would be sleeping in bushes. My grandmother, whom I found was still alive, gave me a piece of land to cultivate. However, her uncle was not happy with the move. He began telling villagers that Akulu's son was an abductee who would one day kill him and take all his property if he remained in their home. When my uncle saw it, he picked a panga to cut me, claiming I should not stay with the child of a bushman. Akulu says since her father divorced her mother and refused to reclaim his children, she cannot return to his clan. On the other hand, she cannot inherit her mother's land because her uncle has vowed to kill her. No, with them. In Lango, land is under customary ownership and is held in trust by the clan. Beatrice Akello, the executive secretary of the Lango Cultural Foundation, admits that the Lango, just like a number of tribes in Africa, face problems when it comes to women's land ownership rights. Most especially the, the women that were once married and came back home, or those ones who never had chance to marry, but had produced children and they stay home. Those are the kind of women that would be given a small portion of land, but is not equivalent to the portion of land that is being given to the male child. Besides unfairness in the size of land, a woman does not have permanent rights on the land she's given. You are not mandated to sell it, neither hire it, you know. So, or rent it to somebody else to probably to dig. No, so it is being controlled. Joyce Ediam, a project officer at the Lira Field Office of Land and Equity Movement Uganda, says in Lango culture, a girl is expected to get married and get her land rights from her husband's clan after she bears children. When you don't get married, your father is expected to give you a piece of land from there. Okay? Now, you have brothers. They question your discipline as to why you can't get married and, and leave that land. For them. Secondly, many married women in the rural areas do not know that the Land Act 2010 establishes spousal consent in case their husbands want to sell or rent out land. A widow has a right to choose whether to marry or not. They assume if you want to remarry, you should choose somebody from your husband's clan. Now when that doesn't happen, you, you, you don't have a voice over the property, including the, the land. Since 2014, Akulu has tried to reclaim her mother's portion of the land in vain. The clan leaders have tried their best, but they cannot really handle this. My uncle, he's so stubborn, he visually swears that he will not help me, and I feel like pushing him would cause more problems. Now the clan leaders training reawakens them on some of these things. That's
we, we, we give them a training to capacity build them on some of their roles and responsibilities established. Akelo says the Lango Culture Foundation is putting in place strategies on how best to balance culture and development and give women platforms to air out their concerns on matters affecting them. So our cultural kind of norms have to be, you know, have to be worked on, most especially the mindset of the, the people in Lango here. The, the mindset has to be change, which is a gradual process. Frances Virunji, the executive director of Uganda Community-Based Association for Women and Children Welfare, UCOBAC, says equal land rights will have serious implications on the food security situation in the country. Not every part of culture is bad. Um, working together with communities, with men who are the power holders, uh, the traditional leaders, we, we, we identify those aspects that are really discriminatory and harmful to women and girls and transform them. Change is possible and we need to, to, to invest in this change. In many rural areas, development has come faster than the pace at which culture is changing. However, since in these areas land is the only source of production, communities need to be supported to combat harmful cultural beliefs and norms if both genders are to benefit. Gillian Nantume, NTV, Weekend Edition.